Mailbag, 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 mailbag. More stuff, yay. But before we get to that, today's beer is Grandpa's Sweater Oatmeal Stout. From Barnhammer Brewing, a new local microbrewery here in Winnipeg. Um, conveniently located within walking distance of one of my work locations. Um, I've actually been drinking growlers of this particular beer for several months now. And I'm excited to find that it's also available in cans. Um, 5.4 ABV, 140 IBU, nice and low, makes me happy. Rich, robust, smooth. Comfortable like a grandfather's sweater. It's just nice. It's not quite as creamy a head as, say, a Guinness or something. Especially if I pour it nice and slow like that, but it's still a very nice beer. Oh, right. The mail. Yeah, let's get on with the mail. All right, let's start with DIY Prototype PCB Board PCB. Uh, $2.65 stated value for the purpose of customs. Don't believe a word of it. Ah, it's more Vero board slash strip board type stuff. Excellent. I knew I ordered more than just the one that I opened on the last mailbag. Um, and this is five of them. Oh, they've got a nice grid laid out on this side, too. So we've got A through X going down that way. Um, A through X going down that way, although that looks like it belongs to the, to the previous board. Uh, numbered 1 through 24 down there. Now, I'm not sure... Why these two have dots screen printed onto them, and this first column is special because it isn't. There's nothing special on that side. But again, just like the previous ones, which I shall grab here, um, there they are. It has tracks running the length, and if you uh, are building your circuit and you need a gap in there, you just cut it with this or with a little drill bit. That's nice. Okay, let's uh, let's see how much I paid for those. Stripboard prototyping, 6.5 by 14.5 centimeters, uncut PCB, platine, single side circuit board five times, from Bobo, 1992, 0901-0. Uh, I paid $4.18 Canadian for it with free shipping. Uh, Americans could buy it for $3.22. Okay, next in, uh, Expansion Board Module 1, Expansion Board Module 1, Plastic Patch 1. Hmm. A multi-pack, it would appear. couple of chips, a little module with a header, and a kit. Yay. Uh, let's see what we got here for the chips. Where's my magnifying glass? ICO 8038COPD. Okay. Don't remember what those are. Obviously, it was a while ago when I ordered them. Let's go check. So this particular listing had multiple different items in it, but the one that I just opened is the uh, IC808 or 8038 uh, DDS signal generator module slash IC DIY sine square triangle wave. So this, oh, and uh, DC 12 volts, 25 volts. Got it from World Chips, and the two of those were $1.55 with free shipping. Um... Let's just look down here. So again, signal generator. So it can generate various different wave shapes. Uh, where's the actual chip here? Oh, I guess since the chip is integrated into this circuit, it's the same thing. Uh, frequency range 10 hertz to 300 kilohertz. 
Um, duty cycle or duty range, I guess, 2% to 98%. That's going to be duty cycle. Um, the low distortion sine wave, 1%. Eh, Low-ish. Um, low temperature drift, that's good. The triangle wave output linearity, 0.1%. That's much better. Power supply can be anywhere between 12 and 24 volts. Okay, let's see what this kit is. Hmm, well, open it up is probably the best way to find out. Obviously, it came from the same seller, World Chips. So, what do we got in here? A bunch of small passive components, a knob, and the pot that's behind it. Uh, a couple of trimmer pots, no transistors, one diode, and one chip. What is the chip? Oh, that chip is also an 803. Oh, this is, this is the same board that we just looked at. Okay, um, so what do we got on the silk screen here? Focus, thank you. So, we have... A duty cycle potentiometer. We have a fine and a coarse frequency. Um, is there an LED in there? Oh yeah, there is one. A little red LED. Uh, refocus. Uh, nee -nee -nee. Distortion. Frequency range low and high. There's a little slider switch. And the chip. Or resistors to beside it. And so what do we have over here? Plus and minus uh, voltage. We have a sine wave, a triangle wave, a square wave, and a ground output. That's not bad. Nice ground plane. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is the one that I ordered. There's several variants on the kit in there. Uh, blue, green, yellow one, and then when it just says kits, and in the picture it also shows the schematic coming with it and the instruction sheet, but this one doesn't have that, so I think that's the one I got, which was $2.84, again from World Chips, and we just reviewed in the uh, previous clip what exactly this thing does, so I don't need to go into it again. I guess we should look at the third thing that was in that uh, same package from World Chips. It's some kind of Wii module here, which nice and flat and doesn't want to come out of its bag. Come on, get out, get out, get out. Okay, what are you? It says 9833 or 9837 on the screen print. Oh, there we go. VCC. Data grounds, uh, S data, S clock, F sync, A ground out. Hmm. Okay. Uh, part numbers for the board are there OY9, what is that? Uh, 9833 or 9837. Okay. So, I suppose I could zoom, try and, I need a bigger magnifying glass for that one, don't I? D68 and a little resonator beside it or something. A couple capacitors, couple capacitors, not much else. Have to resort to the listing to figure out what this guy is, I think. Programmable microprocessors, sine wave, square wave, AD9833, DDS signal generator module. Oh, it was on a signal generator kick when I bought this. So of course it's also from World Chips, uh, four bucks seventy-four cents, free shipping. What does it have to say about it? Okay, depending on the clock rate, um, you can get a resolution of 0.1 hertz up down to 0 0.004 hertz if you clock it with a one meg clock. Wow, uh, serial interface. Yeah, we saw that. Use a serial clock. Uh, Three-wire serial interface, yeah. Um, it can operate between 2.3 and 5 volts. 
which means we can use it with an Arduino or an ESP if we choose to. Uh, what else we got down here? Low power. You can output up to 12 and a half megahertz. No, oh, sinusoidal, triangular, or square wave outputs. Okay, so it's another type of signal generator that can do multiple different outputs. I'm an idiot. I opened the next item with the camera turned off. So, um, it's from Singapore. There wasn't anything really interesting on the outside of the bag. But it is a software defined radio, USB software defined radio. Um, I ordered this thing months and months and months and months ago. It came with a, a remote control, which I don't think will be of any use to me. Although, you know, infrared remote controls are always handy. It's got a little battery protector sheet in here, does it? It did. It came with its own battery. Batteries included. How do you like that? Anyway, um, well, the other thing it came with is a software with a software CD, which I don't think I'll be using. Mostly because it'll be Windows software and I've got a Linux machine, so. Um, anyway, so the antenna, magnetic antenna, good strong magnet too, connects to this little port on the side here. I can't remember the exact name of that type of connector, but it's, it's not unknown. It's used in, um, if you crack open your laptop, it might be something like that going between the uh, Wi-Fi antenna and the Wi-Fi module. Um, USB on that side. So these things are based on an RTL uh, chipset, which is a very common chipset for software-defined radios. Um, it's got built-in decoders for DAB and DVB, which are the European uh, digital television standards, which of course doesn't work in North America because we use a ATSC. Um, but the radio chips in it can be addressed directly with proper software. And that's why I bought it because then you can use it as just a normal FM receiver, tunable all over the place, almost like a ham receiver, FM or AM receiver actually, or as a spectrum analyzer. Dun, dun, dun. That's probably what I'm going to use it for if I can get it working. Um, there is some Linux software uh, that works with these apparently. I don't have it loaded up on my laptop right now because I don't think my laptop's got enough guts to handle it. But I'll try it. But first, I'm going to try and find the listing for this. Okay, since I it was a long time ago, when I bought this thing, I, I looked it up. It was actually about six months, literally, that it took from when I ordered it to when it showed up. <sighs> um, so the listing's obviously not around anymore, but this is another listing of the same product from the same seller. That seller being Snake Wing 2005. Yes, he actually calls himself Snake Wing. Brilliant. Uh, I paid less than this at the time I paid, I think, five sixty. dollars um, This particular one's got uh, some shipping on it, too. Whatever. So, the search terms you're looking for, if you want one of these things, USB, um, okay, so DVB, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, HDTV, don't let that fake you out. That's not North American HDTV, that's European. Um, the two chips that are in here, RTL... 2832 and an R5 or sorry an R820T one of those is the video decoder and one of them is the radio chip um, and that's what you're looking for if you want to track down one of these things there's lots of them and they're cheap next up digital voltmeter module that sounds cool of course, it's not what's in the package. Not even close. These are little LED modules. Um, oh, I think I think these are the LEDs they call Piranha LEDs for 
reasons that I can't find an explanation for. Uh, we got a plus or a minus in there, and we got hmm, those, those don't look like resistors, but I would expect them to be. What do we got here for tracks? Okay, so this column's in parallel, and that is a resistor. Hmm, let me get out my meter. I'm not even going to look at the listing yet. I just want to find out if I know about these things. So that resistor is 50 ohms, 51 ohms. Okay. There's three of those in parallel, 50 ohms. I don't know anything about these LEDs. I'm going to... Yes, I am. I'm going to power them up. Oh, I'm going through the preliminaries of learning about them. Is that risky? Of course it is. Do I care? I've got two of them. So right now I've got my power supply over here set for 5 volts. Can you see that? You can't see that. So I'll just plug those into the plated through holes and hope for the best. Um, what do we got there? So 1.7 amps. Uh, current limiting. Let's crank that down just a little bit. Let's limit it at about 20 milliamps. Turn that on. Curious. Maybe we will have to look at the listing. Okay, here's here's the listing. 5 slash 12 volt LED panel board. 12 slash 24 slash 48 piranha LED panel LED board. Warm white light. Uh, from module fans. Ordered a bunch of stuff from them. So there's several different shapes of board in here like it says there's the 12 volt 48 led i didn't get that i got a 24 volt or 24 led board so there is a 5 volt led board with a big honking resistor on there there is the 12 volt led board which looks exactly the same uh, also with the big honking resistor none of the pictures show the back of the 24 LED board. They all show the front. This one is the 12 LED board. Uh, so I'm still not sure exactly which one I got. I'm going to have to try a few experiments and find out. Okay, I figured it out. It was my own dumb mistake. I wasn't making good contact with these, that's all. So I'm back down to 5 volts because that's safer. And turn it on and boy howdy she's bright. So I'm not sure if you can see that over there. But at 5 volts it's drawing 320 milliamps. And according to the listing at 5 volts it should draw 360 which is pretty much bang on I don't want to run it up to 12 because obviously it's a 5 volt device um, so let's just and those things those are bright and they're so bright can you see them through my beer okay they're not quite bright enough for that but and with these little dome lenses on them they're kind of focused and directional too that's neat. But, uh, let's just throw a meter across them just for the fun of it. So, as I said before, there's columns of LEDs in parallel. So the voltage drop across one LED is 2.78 volts. The voltage drop across the resistor is 2.07 and the power supply is showing 4.98 volts so yeah that makes sense okay wow those are bright but i still don't know why they're called piranhas so this that i totally opened with the camera paused is the final thing for today it is a kit 
It is specifically a kit that is entirely surface mount. And it is our old friends, the 555 and 4017 Light Chaser Circuit. The part in the middle is the actual uh, blinky light circuit. All the columns on the sides are just surface mount practice pads. Um, the, there's resistors and capacitors of, so 1206 resistors, 805 capacitors and resistors. 603 caps and resistors and 402 resistors. The resistors are all in series over there. Um, they come down to the pad. The capacitors are all in parallel. So you're adding in all cases and just making sure that you've got uh, some, got your uh, surface mount soldering skills on point. And then the middle part is actually a functional circuit as opposed to a lot of the uh, soldering practice kits that you get for surface mount soldering. And it is typical 555 uh, oscillator, typical 4017 uh, light sequencer for the for, for the uh, 10 outputs, and then the carry output, which acts as an 11th output essentially, goes out through some steering diodes, um, through some series resistors, to the base of four transistors, four NPN transistors, to drive four more LEDs, which are two, three, four of those guys. So that's the, uh, that's the basic kit on the back is interesting. It's basically emulating one of these PCB rulers. So we've got millimeters and centimeters around the sides here. Um, no inches because that's archaic and why would you? And then the sizing layouts for various uh, chip sizes and uh, copper trace sizes if you're designing a circuit board of your own, which is pretty much the same stuff that's on these typical PCB rulers. So that's kind of neat. And the instructions that come with it actually have some, albeit in Chinese, um, decent instructions for soldering surface mount using a soldering iron. Tin the first pad, um, heat up and tack down the first side of your uh, component, make a nice little solder fillet, repeat for the other side, nice little solder fillet, and then for a chip, the same thing, tin one pad on a corner, tack that down, and then tin the rest. So that's, I mean, if it was in, written in a language that I could understand, it would be a lot better, but still, that's pretty neat. So, I guess we will go off to the listing now, hoping that I don't screw that part up, and we'll see how much I paid for this. Well, that's anticlimactic. I couldn't find the actual listing, so here it is in my history. Um, DIY SMD Rotating LED Component Soldering Practice Board Skill Training DIY Kits. I paid $1.96, and I'm pretty confident that I got it at auction uh, from... ASP underscore E zone, but you can find lots of similar ones just by using those those uh, search terms. Here's a bunch that have similar search terms and come up. Um, the price can vary wildly, so obviously sort by lowest price first, because why wouldn't you? But uh, two or three bucks can get it for you pretty much any time if you shop smart. And there is today's Mailbag Monday items. As usual, a wide variety. Got a couple of different ways of generating uh, test signals. A soldering kit to practice my uh, SMD soldering, which is horrendous. Um, good old through-hole Vero board, or generic knockoff thereof. These ridiculously bright piranha LEDs. I'm intrigued by those. I, I still want to figure out why they're called piranhas. And then there's this uh, RTL chip-based uh, software-defined radio. That should be fun to play with. Though I'm not sure how I'm going to get a video of that because the laptop in my shop is way too underpowered for that. I'm going to have to do it upstairs in the living room. 
which means I won't be able to record up there because it's noisy and echoey and just not conducive to it. So I'll have to, uh, have to come up with a way of, uh, doing that. Um, but that's an experiment and a video all of its own. Thanks for watching. Comments down below. Um, thanks to my supporters on Patreon for partially funding the mailbags. Um, there's a small and growing number of guys, people over there that are helping me out. And I really appreciate that. If you feel like throwing a buck in my tip jar, uh, the links in the description, along with the links to all these things. Um, except for that one, because I couldn't find the link. All right. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.